Good morning and welcome back to another video. This morning I'm going to be showing you how to make a really beautiful bracelet using only seed beads and four millimeter rounds and a clasp of your choice. And today I'm using one of these ball and socket clasps because it fit my wrist perfectly. So I'm gonna show you the bracelet now and it is not completed because it's very repetitive and when we finish it, I'll show you, I had literally this much room so it fit my wrist perfectly and what I wanted was just a beautiful, simple bracelet that I could wear every day like this one. I'm in love with this one. I love things that have open spaces, which is what I'm gonna call this bracelet. And that's how I know I have a favorite. If I know the name before I even finish the design, I know this is going to be one of my favorites, which I have many, but that's the project today. This is going to be nice, quick and easy, very, very simple. And that's what I wanted for today. Very low key and a small amount of materials. So. All you're gonna need are just, like I said, some rounds, four millimeter, they can be anything you want. These are Drux, some size 11s, these are Toho, my favorite color. And then I'll show you how to end on this one and attach the clasp. It's the same on both ends. So we're gonna begin by pulling a lot of thread on a size 11 beading needle and keep one of these handy if you have them or a pair of pliers and we're ready to go. So I have, like I said, four yards, a lot of thread because you'll see as we go what I'm doing. And I spread them out. I wanna make sure that I'm keeping an eye out for um, defective beads because it will throw off the shape of the bracelet. So. We're gonna begin by picking up four of the rounds. Let me go down on zoom for you. So four rounds and then seven elevens. And then four more rounds and seven more. Okay, so you have a pattern that looks just like this. We're gonna drop it all the way down, leaving about a 20 inch long tail. And that's so we can do the other side after, and I'll show you over there on the other bracelet. So all we're gonna do, leaving that 20 inch tail, is I'm gonna turn the work like this. The working thread is coming out in this direction. Let me pull off just a little bit. We're just gonna come around and go right back through all the beads in this direction, making a nice circle. And I won't be able to do it all at once, so I'm gonna take my time, go really slow here, just so we don't have any knots right in the beginning. So we're just running around, going through all the beads making a circle, no knots or anything like that today. Okay, and then once you come up on that tail, just like this, we haven't made a full blown circle yet. So we're just gonna run up these four rounds on the edge there, just like that and then weave up through these seven elevens. And we're gonna stop for just a second. I'm gonna put my needle down. I do not want this moving around as we're working, so I'm gonna attach a needle right to the tail right now. And we're gonna secure this part down right now, so that way we're all ready to go for the time when it comes to add the clasp. But this way it'll be all nice and secure. If I can get it on there, there we go. All right, so I'm just gonna flip the work around. So now we're on to the tail. We're coming out of a round. 
we need to be coming out of the seed beads. So I'm just gonna weave up through these seven right here and pull down on both threads. Now, here we go. We're gonna ladder stitch, um, square stitch, excuse me. So we're gonna pick up one 11. We're coming out of this one right here. We're just gonna come back around and go right back through. And then right down this one. <laughs> if I could see, that would be great. I just missed it, totally missed it. And then again, we're gonna come back around and now we're gonna go through the second one. And right back down. And if you forgot how to do the square stitch, I did a couple of beginner videos on them. So pick up another one. We're just locking each one together one by one. Right back up and through. And right back down. And we'll do this all the way down. Almost there. And then at the very end, have to remember to do this part. I'm getting ahead of myself there. Okay, so here's the last 11. We're gonna go through, back down, and then we're gonna run up this whole side right here and straighten the work out. And yes, my needle is a little bent, so gives me trouble. Right up those seven, and then right back down the new sevens, all these new ones that we just put on. Give it a good pull, and I'm gonna flip because I like working in one direction. And we'll add our last square stitch row, so right around and back through this one back down and continue this step all the way down. This is um, a form of one of, in the book that I read all the time that I'm talking about, the um, one by Mr. Uh, Goodhue, this is what he called one of his orphan ideas, one that he started and never finished. And I think that's what's pretty cool too, is I thought, how could I make it more modern and simplified, but still have a lot of beautiful, beautiful um, sections in between. And this is, Definitely one of those bracelets that are incredibly strong and durable and just, I think, beautiful on. Um, I love anything that has like this, an air, like an airy feeling, a lightweight feeling, especially in the summertime. So don't forget this part. I'm wiggling up. It's going to be tight. So I'm going to use my grippers just so I don't slip because I do have a bent needle that I'm trying to get in there. All right, it's gonna be difficult. So I'm gonna go through whatever it wants to. And what did I miss? Just one. So I'm gonna go in through that one. And that's it. Sometimes, it is a struggle because we have a lot of threads going on and I never want to push the work to where the beads crack. So now we're going to go right down this new row and we're just going to leave that as aside. Needle attached and everything. And we're going to flip back over so it's all secured down on one side. We don't have to worry about it moving around and all that stuff. And I'm gonna give it a good pull and see how it's still got a little bit of movement. We're just gonna run through these rounds right here all 
the way back and around. We just want this part nice and tight. And take your time through here. If you want to use a 13, definitely use a size 13. I had no troubles um, with a size 11, so thankfully. All right, so we secured it all down. Now we're gonna continue doing the same thing. I'm gonna run up these seven, I'm gonna poke out this one right here, and we're gonna begin with the square stitch. Pick up one, come back around and go through this one in this direction. And lots of thread and right back down that new one. Pick up one and go through this one. And remember, it's gonna be tight, but that's what you want. The square stitch is so incredibly strong. And it's funny, when I was designing this, I said, it needs more, it needs this, it needs that. I tried all kinds of different things that I thought would look neat in there, but it just didn't work. It took away from what I wanted. It was a very simple, beautiful bracelet, that's it with a little amount of material so you don't need any specialty beads or anything like that because sometimes they're expensive and very hard to find and especially right now it's just you know everything's so slow and hard to get and I know a lot of people you know including myself don't have that extra money to go um, splurge on those new beads that are coming out even though I want to who <laughs> really really want to just not now so I'm trying to use what I have on hand to make really cool beautiful designs so that's it that's all you're gonna do three rows of the square stitch in between each of the section and I'll show you again how we'll do the section and then, like I said, we'll add the clasp together and we'll do it. We'll do that on the, and on both, it's the same on both ends is what I should say. So sorry, I am a little rusty. It's been a while since I made a video. And then we'll go right back up all these beads. Me personally, I like to flip, so I work top to bottom. And then we'll just continue. So this is our third row. Just continue with the square stitch. And it gets so much easier once your thread starts to get shorter too. Pulling all this thread is what takes <laughs> the longest for me anyway. Okay. And you can see how high my tension is, the indentations on my finger. I'm holding on real, real tight. No gaps, no separation here. Just keep going. And then I'll show you the next step and then we'll move on. And like I said, this is gonna be a short, quick, fun stitch. And I hope you guys enjoy it. A couple more. Okay. And I'm telling you, you will not be able to break this bracelet. Wow, is it a strong, strong bracelet. So I have my three rows on. I've got to go back up this whole row right here. Just 
straighten it out just like this and then write down the new row. Let me shorten that a little bit. Okay, now we're ready for the repeat. So all we're gonna do now is pick up four of the rounds and then seven elevens. And four more rounds. Okay. And we're coming out in this direction toward me. So we're going to bring it around and go right back through all seven of these 11s, just like this. Give it a good pull. And now we have to retrace this whole thing. So go through all the rounds because it'll be all separated and messy. And then right back up those seven through these rounds. And right down. Plenty of room in there still. And you can immediately feel it get nice and secure. And then we're going to step out that seventh 11 right there. Oh, I think I'm going to love those colors. I wish I had had a one of these in gold. You can also use a button, which I was going to try to add this one in, but I didn't want to take away from it, but we'll see. We'll see as we get to the end. But I'll just show you how to add the simple one for here because I wanted something that I could pop on and off real easily. So I'll show you on that. But if you see the photo on Facebook or whatever, I might change my mind and add this beautiful button in there. And it will be added the same way that I add these, the um, ball and socket. So that's it. You'll just continue square stitching for three rows now. And then repeat again with the four, seven, four, right back around through all seven. And that's it. I'll just do this one row just to show you and then we'll move over to the one that is almost done and like I said I <laughs> you know I'm not a good um, measurer so when I got to the end of that one I said oh my goodness I barely had enough room for a clasp so I wanted to come up with one that I could keep short and that was the ball and socket. So that's why I did that. Easy to get on and off as well, which is something that I like. I don't like fussing around with my class where I'm trying to get bracelets on and off and stuff. So that's why I decided to go with that one. Okay, that's it. Nice and easy. And I had you pull four yards for a reason, which I'll show you on that one. It gives us plenty of thread too, because this we're using a lot of thread right now just by doing these sections of square stitch. We're using a lot. Because each bead, one by one attached, plus that reinforcing part. Oh goodness, just be careful of that. No knots, no tangles today. Where did I get hooked here? Let me back it out a second. If this happens to you, just a tiny knot in there. Right back down. Okay. And then always remember to go right back up that stack. There is a very small knot in here. There we go. And right back down. And then you'll do your third row of square stitch and then you would continue on with your pattern. And wow, I love those colors together. Okay, so I'm gonna move over to this one. Let me just swap out 
move my beads to the side. I'll finish that one in a little bit. Grab the rest of my beads that I need to do my last round. Last row, excuse me. Okay. So I'm stepping out of that stack. I'm going to finish it by doing the last group. So it'll be four, seven, and then four rounds. And then we'll take it and we'll go right back around and up these seven. So much easier when the thread gets shorter. Oh my goodness. Because it's a lot to work with. So you have to go slow. Have patience. But it's really worth it. You don't have to worry about adding in thread later on. And all that stuff. Alright. Pop out here. And this is where I'm going to add my last three rows of square stitch. And then I'll show you how to pop the clasp on and we'll be good to go. It's so funny, I lost so much track of time. I cannot believe in the, we're in the middle of May almost, it's, it's just crazy absolutely crazy I literally thought the other day it was <laughs> still April and I looked and I was like oh my gosh it's just flying by and I hope you're all doing well and I'm always thinking of you guys and I appreciate you sending me messages when you know I'm not doing well you know if I'm quiet I'm usually not feeling well but I have to tell you somebody sent me one message it was so weird one message one line in it and I I couldn't believe it it was something my father would have said to me and that's it that's when I got up and said I am not going to lay around all day even though I tire easily don't feel well a lot um, that one message just, like I said, meant everything to me. So I appreciate you all so very much for always supporting me and being so kind and asking how I am. And it, it means more than you could ever imagine. So I appreciate you all very much. All right, I'm getting there. I don't want to get all mushy and emotional. Because <laughs> you know that happens to me a lot. So, almost there, guys. I know it's not the funnest thing to watch. Because I'm sure you've done the square stitch with me before. But, these colors together are just really cool, too. Very, very cool. So I'm gonna run up this row and then right back down this one. And then I'm gonna go right back up this whole row again. I'm gonna flip the work and I'm gonna poke out that fourth bead. One, two, three, fourth, 11, right there, right there. And here's where we're gonna attach the clasp. I'm gonna go off zoom so you can see. So I have one side attached right here. All I did was pick up three 11s. The end, doesn't matter which one, whatever one you wanna start with. I'm gonna slide it down. We're just gonna skip that end and run through these three 11s. And you see how we're coming out of the 11 this way, we need to just come back around and go through it in this direction. So right back around with three on and pull because I want this to lay straight. I'm gonna give it a really good pull here. 
okay and then we're going to run up these three and around that clasp and I did this a total of three times and then I'm going to show you where to bury a couple knots even though it's not necessary because um, we're reinforcing this part so much but I still want to show you what to do with leftover thread and all that too so So it's gonna get tight. I'm gonna pull down just a little bit so I can get in there without slipping. Very, very carefully, very carefully. Okay, great. And then we'll go right back up, pull. Let's make sure that lays nice and straight, just like this. Perfect. So now I'm going to weave down this stack. Now we have a lot of thread in here. A, I mean a lot. So I'm going to use the help. And just don't slip. Okay, and I'm going to go right back down this row. And this is where I'm going to use up my extra thread. So see if it's not that strong on the edges here. There's a little bit of movement, but not much. All I'm going to do now is just run through and go all the way around. This is optional, but this is how I tightened it up. I also am going to dip this piece. I know I've talked about that a lot. Before I say anything else, I'm going to stop right here. And this is where I'm going to pick up that thread space right in between those two rounds. And I'm going to throw in two knots. So pick it up. Before you pull that loop, put your needle right in and continue. Yeah, this is a piece I'm going to dip because I've never worked with the finish of these Druck beads before. So I don't know, um, you know how well they're going to hold up. And I don't like removing my bracelets to wash my hands every minute. So if I put that protectant on it, it really, really helps and works. So all I'm doing, this is it, is just weaving up and down. Like I said, you're going to hit some tight spots. Just using up the rest of my thread and tightening everything up in the process. And then if you dip this piece, it's gonna absolutely stay and hold its shape and be protected and all that. But that's all optional. You definitely don't have to do that. I kind of do both. <laughs> I'll use up all my thread and dip it just because if you go through all this work, you definitely don't want it you know, falling apart on you, so. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna keep weaving until I have no more thread left. There's no need to put any more knots in here. Believe me, this is solid. This is a solid piece. All right, so I'm gonna stop right here. And we'll take a look at it. Actually, I'm gonna just go ahead and burn it. So I only have a little tiny piece left. And let me see what I do with my thread burner. I'm gonna burn as close as I can there. And we'll take a look at it. Let's move some of this stuff out of the way. And that's it. Oh, I gotta burn a little closer. You see that? That will drive me crazy. There we go. And that is it. I'm gonna actually try it on for you because I know you always say that. So that's what it'll look like on. And it is absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, I love it. And I can't wait to make myself one in gold because it'll look good with this ring too. So I really hope you enjoyed today's project. 
and I have missed you guys so much. So it's really nice to be back and beating and having fun. And I will see you guys really soon for another project. So take care and have a really good day. Bye-bye.